spinning around a microphone is really hard. I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And um, we've got Pyro on the phone with us. So hi, Pyro. Hello. It's the whole Nerd Talk crew. Yay. Everybody's here. It's like a family get together. Only with less awkwardness. Except for the people who. And only one of us is deaf. But are not here. <laughs> you two are so talking over each other right now. That's Pixie requires headphones at the moment, so it'll be just a second. But hey, the Nerd Talk crew is back from Gen Con Indie. I thought you were. I, I, I absolutely thought you were going to say back from the dead. Um, I didn't die on my weekend trip. I, I don't know about you, but I, Shh. I definitely didn't perish, and no one tried to resurrect me. So I would explain this strange craving for brains I've been having, though. Uh, you, people just get those in life, really. Oh man, I have the perfect zinger for this. Do we now? Keep going. <laughs> is it you're an idiot? Is that the one? I get that a lot, but I don't think that's what she's going for right now. No, no, I think I think that's the one actually. That's the one we need. Uh, not any of the other one. You know, I was kind of expecting Brian on that one. I was, I was expecting the Legend of Zelda item get noise. Da, 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 da. Brain. Nice. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, I just wanted to. I just wanted to check on my. Uh, camera angle there so you're fine yep <laughs> sen actually isn't that short it's just he's why he's in, sitting in a short chair so haha -ha. we have video content those of you who check our site can actually find it um after the fact because well this no, isn't no going live, live video content today but that, high that quality seems video to be a better way of to there will it. be hd video content later so. edited hd we'll video rewarded. content so how about that so yeah should we just jump right into it uh, Seeing as we're 15 minutes late. Ha! I suppose we should. All right, so I suppose we should start with the first thing that we did at Gen Con, which is the crap that everybody got. So what was in the swag bag? Okay, so upon arriving in, in Indy, anyone who attended Gen Con got the prerequisite swag bag. You know, walk up to the booth, they punch your badge to say that, hey, you got this thing, you mm -hmm. can't get another one without getting another badge. Or and uh, out the guys who are at the swag bag booths and stealing all of the swag bags. Well, and, and of course, they all made the same joke to everybody. Hey, come on up here. Let us punch you and we'll give you a bag. Yeah. It only hurts for a little bit. Yeah, I got that joke too. Uh, except you didn't have the uh, Elvis Costello joke thrown at you as well. Nope, can't say I did. There, uh, there's a joke for that? My name. <laughs> Righto. <laughs> All of us only got the one swag bag, though. And among the five swag bags we pulled, we had only two of the five magic decks that were available. There were magic decks in the swag bags. Yes. Oh. Uh, magic the Gathering sample decks. So yeah, not a full-size deck. Yeah, there are only 30 cards in each. And it was only mono color, so those mm -hmm. of you who've played Magic the Gathering will understand what that means. Those of you who haven't, the game is built of five different colors, each one representing a different element. Um... So white for life and protection, black for death and uh, death and decay, uh, red for fire and destruction, uh, green for growth and nature, and finally blue for uh, smartness and yeah. raven claw. <laughs> <laughs> that that is what blue is for. Yeah, manipulation. Water. Yeah, that kind of thing. Lots of flying. Also creatures. water. Just saying. But. So yeah, uh, amongst the white and red decks, three reds and two whites, and then we completely reenacted Commodore Hustle episode seventeen, right? Where yeah. we got furiously into Magic: The Gathering as a result of these swag bags. Yeah, Pixie and Pyro must have at least played at least a dozen games each day, and then on the uh... third day, finally went nuts and just picked up a ton of cards. 2,000 cards across the I actually large. don't have the boxes in the studio with me, or I would just show you, but they're like, yay big, and... Yeah, it, every booth seemed to be, ha, seemed to have the deal of, hey, here's a ton of cards with a couple rares in them for, like, between 15 and 25 bucks. I'm so disappointed there was no land. <laughs> yeah, but apparently we didn't provide land. Oops. Not that land is hard to come across. You can go into any card store and be like, I need 10,000 lands, here's $5. I'll be like, here you go. Yeah. Or if you buy a Magic the Gathering fat pack, they always come with, uh, I think, 10 of each land type. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Um, so, yeah, along that line, uh, 
we we also got in the swag bag a copy of if she can find it rift so yeah it, rift. that that I'm is kind of sweet that we received a full retail mmo copy in our swag bag so I, I'm going to check what Rift is actually selling for right now. What the now. retail is for the yeah. actual disc. Because it came with, like, the disc that is currently in my computer. Which is and pulls up Amazon. our copies were replete with 30 days of game time. Yep, so. so it came with not only the disc, but also a free month. Which and I've already spent about six hours playing mine. And we are so impressed with the character builder so far, just saying. Hey, f cool Old Republic ad. All right. If you play Rift, come find us because we will be on Silkweb, which is the realm slash shard slash server. All right, you so will, here we if, are. If, if fans come up to us, we will totally hang out with them. We could. We should make a nerd talk guild. Yes, done. A already done. Physical copy of Rift sells on Amazon for twenty nine ninety nine. Uh, it's on sale. List price is fifty. So. Yep. Pretty There's, good swag bag. I think most and people are just expected to have yet. digital copies of it, though, so I, those will retail for this cheaper. This is... I haven't been to many cons, but that is the nicest swag bag I've ever gotten. Yeah, this this is definitely up there. I'm very impressed. Even, even the plastic bags that all the swag came in were very useful for walking around the con. <laughs> also in the swag bags were f cards that allowed us to get free commemorative dice with yep. Gen Con 2011 branding on them. Yep, every year Gen Con provides a new dice, uh, Crystal Cast. I've actually got mine in my pocket right now. I've got it right here! And so, hey, could you pull up the display for the video so I know what I'm doing? Sure. Um, okay, so if you look at that, you'll see that it says it's a regular Gen D6. Con 11 on it, yep. on where the 6 would be. So, yeah. Uh, Crystal Cast was, um, or Cast, which, however you pronounce it, it's was, was, uh, given these out if you brought up the voucher that came in your swag bag. So that was cool. And towards the end of the con they were selling them for a dollar each. Aw oh, snap. In case you happen to want to be able to throw like six Gen Con dice at once. So there's that. It's neat. Already getting the getting the swag bag for list price has been much more than the cost of our badges. Yep. So. And then there was a very handy coupon book also inside of the uh bag. So, for instance, uh, when I bought some magic cards, I did it at the Troll and Toad booth, who had a 5% uh, discount uh, coupon. Uh, so, I mean, anything else of import in the swag bag that we should mention? Or? Not really. I think everything else was Coupons. Just, everything else was kind of like just that. like advertisements. The, flyers, there was a coupon kind of for a pizza place that was not Domino's Pizza. Yeah, it was, was like Donitos. similar to Domino's Pizza. It, it was almost maliciously deceptive. It's like, we hope that you go to the other company and misunderstand this coupon. And yeah. then I, I do remember one of the members of our party getting upset when they found the coupon and were like, oh, we could have saved money on that pizza we ordered. Not Except realizing we it. actually couldn't have because yeah. the coupon price of the Dorino's pizza was the same as the list price of the same size of Domino's pizza. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't a great coupon. So, I guess the swag bag can't hit all of the natural 20s. No, but the fact that it came with a free retail MMO and uh, a, a very nice die, which has now been added to my collection. Ooh, it even reflects pink. Yay! Um, as well as the nice magic starter. So, here's your first hit, guys. Yep, so, there's the starter box, and... I've picked out a lot of cards from here, so I don't know how much is in here. But it came with 30 cards. Yeah, it, it's a pretty nice pre-built deck. I mean, it's, There's some good cards in here. It, it definitely has one rare, I think. Um, a couple uncommons. You know, it's it's nothing too game-breaking. It doesn't come with, there's like, a uncommon. Planeswalker. But, there's uh, another. Th they were definitely decent. Um... There's a couple more. I don't see any rares. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and then there's a... Quick rule sheet. Yeah, like quick start. How to play thing. How to snort this crack. Um, Details you wear in your nose to put it and how to inhale it. 
I actually do like that they're now trying to advertise more of the characters of Magic, the uh, the signature Planeswalkers. Mm-hmm. I actually, because I am a huge nerd, have read a lot of the books. And so when Pixie pulled out a Jaya Ballard, I was like, oh, Jaya Ballard? I, I read all her books. She is a good character. And yet I just kind of sacrifice her constantly. I'm just like, yeah, I'm right. just going to block with her and ignore her. Uh, this is what we do with the actual planeswalkers. Um, so yeah, lots of rules and stuff but, like that. But it's very well written. Like, I don't see anyone picking this up, having trouble figuring out the rules based on what's said on the other side of the page. Yeah. It, it does a very good job of explaining the turn sequence and how the stack works. Like, co- concepts that were actually difficult to understand. you need to fold this. Yeah, no, it, it's not intuitive to how to put it away. <laughs> I don't think they annoying. want you to do you had, that. If you had a big poster paper that explained how to fold the poster paper, right. but it's like step one covers up the instruction, so you, now you're like, I forgot what step two was. I can't see it. I have to unfold it again. I can see a distinct problem with this product. And the, the only purpose of this poster paper is just to tell you how to fold and unfold it. Yes, and that then it comes so with an extra one that actually is the instructions they want you to have. Yeah. So, so you, you, there you go. You have the instructions paper that you fold simultaneously with the paper that has the stuff you really care about on it. And then hopefully by then you'll be good enough at folding paper that you won't need the instructions when you fold that up. So. Right. Along with the stuff we all acquired for free, there's the stuff we individually purchased. Yep. So. With money. Yes. All of the money. Because the Gen Con dealer's room levels. is nothing if not enormous. It's totally enormous. It's big. Huge. I think Huge. I have a zinger for that, too. Huge. I think just, we just made a deal with technical zinger. term. <laughs> We will momentarily. So yeah, of course there was definitely shopping to be done at Gen Con. Um, some of us went with lists, some of us just kind of went and was saw online. anything that struck our fancy as it was placed in front of us by eager merchants. Yeah. So I Which guess... actually worked out quite well. I, I, I was one of the buying anything that was put in front of me types. I have all kinds of cool merchandise. I I came with a list, but uh, I I went through my list on day one and still made purchases on day two and three. In the mic. Just making sure it doesn't look like I'm uh, doing uncouth things with my microphone. (laughs) Now we're good. Oh, there's some other stuff that was acquired for free. This bandana! Yeah, Privateer Press, of course, handed out their signature bandanas, as they always do. Um, they also were giving out Very uh, chic. little miniature so we little books of, uh, of uh, No Quarter, their, mo- their bi-monthly magazine. I-, I have this thing cranked all the way up, but you were talking away from the mic. so. Mike, can you hear me? Yeah, e- even now my levels are just not going up. I don't know if the mic is turned down low or what. Dude, it is at max. I'm telling you now. Talk into the microphone and all will Mike, be Mike, Mike. No, it's just not going up today. I don't know. Okay, moving on. Oh. So, uh, what else? Do we want to go into things we actually bought? Yes, that was where I was yes. going with that. Okay, so Pyro, let's start with you, because you already gave a nice <laughs> lead in. I bought a bunch of magic cards and a playing mat and a deck box and a bunch of sleeves. And the playing mat and several of the sleeves were Gen Con 2011 branded. So they're commemorative, like a t-shirt that you don't have to wear. Now, Pyro, do you, did you actually have a magic collection before uh, before Gen Con 2011? I played magic casually, like, in late middle school, early high school. I have don't have any remnants of it, though. Okay, you All had already gotten rid of your entire though. collection. Yes. Well, welcome back. That, that's okay, though, because the only format I like is drafting. And the with drafting, you get new cards Every for tournament. the tournament. Yeah. And you don't use any of your old cards. I gotcha. Okay. Um, anything else? Um, I very nearly bought a top hat, but they didn't have them in my size. Which was, like, the most depressing thing in the world. <laughs> they had a very well-renowned... Haberdasher there, though. 
the Mad Hatter Hatters. I saw the the name on the mirror said like the Golden Swan or something. I found out on the final day, to my disappointment, that that booth was not a Mad Hatter booth, but was merely a booth that was reselling hats from a variety of haberdashers. Phrases you don't get to use very often on your podcast. What, haberdashery? Right. Dude. They were really cool hats, though. Every time I walked by someone who was wearing them, I was all like, man, that person is wearing a really nice hat. A handmade felt with a little bow on the side and a ribbon. I don't know. I, I was having a problem with a lot of the steampunk booths that were there, all selling the same, like, five products. There were a lot of corsets all over the place, and only a very small minority of them were even well-designed for corsets. And then they're still bad because they're corsets and they're kind of not good. Yeah, it, uh, the thing that bothered me the most was I would walk past all these steampunk booths and, like, with a c- couple rare exceptions, they were all selling the same goggles, the same little trinkets. It it was like they were all just chopping out of the same catalog and just setting up a booth. So it, it was kind of disappointing when the idea of steampunk is that hey, we all just make whatever we think is cool and sell that. There were a lot of prefab resellers who were did not seem to be the makers of the items, but were just pawning them off on the audience. Yeah. And most of those types of booths had the same thing. Well, it, it's a shame, because like every set of steampunk goggles, I feel, should be a unique construction. There were plenty of of vendors who were hand-making all of their stuff, too. And one of those was the booth I termed the Leather Castle. It was like, it was kind of like they built a cardboard castle, and there was a lot of leather products in them. And Pixie purchased a wide variety of products from them, or acquired products. Purchased is maybe a little strong of a word. Yeah, there was specifically a leather place uh, in there that was constructed out of, like, just basic uh, gridded stainless steel. Um, Pretty basic stuff, but they had really great quality leather. Um, They're there every year. And they were run by the makers of the items. Yeah, absolutely. One of the persons who was running the cash register was very talkative and humorous. Was this the same place that was selling the, uh, the hand sanitizer bottles? Yes, yes, they the were. The little flask things. Yeah. Which, great great idea for the con. It was just a shame that the hand sanitizer bottle wasn't quite up to the quality of the, like, drinking bottles. They were, they were missing a lot of the leather components that were on the drinking bottles. Mm-hmm. The person who was running the booth, though, would go around asking people if they had any questions and offering to make up answers to them, which is to say lie. And it was it was pretty funny. This was the same booth that was also selling sugar pills uh, that yeah. were in like fake aspirin bottles, uh, mimicking Left for Dead. Peels, as they were called. Yep, peels over here. <laughs> there was a cardboard cutout of Lewis standing next to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw that. But Pixie, uh, tell tell the audience about your items that you got from this booth. Um, could you grab the mat? I think I. I stuck it in the bag there. I in think. Here? Um, no. Should be in there. There we go. So, I purchased this really, really pretty playing mat, which I'm holding upside down. Here we go. It is very pretty and very thick. And yep. over break, we were probably going to play magic on it. So, <laughs> just saying. Um,. It's got a nice little, like, orange dragon on a, like, purplish mountain landscape. It's pretty great. We were on a bit of a dragon kick for this Gen Con. All of the dragons, because dragons are cool. Well, I was on a bit of a dragon kick. Um, I was on a bit of a wizard kick. As wizards versus dragons. It's true. You, you did buy lots of things that involved wizards. So there's that. Um, Pyro bought me this super cool... Um, Ten for holding my cards, which also has a dragon on it. And instead of hoarding his treasure in the bottom, there's a like not very secret compartment in the top, which slides open that way. If I don't, I, I am very adamant that if if you're a creator of fiction 
and you create a dragon, and that dragon does not have a horde of jewels associated with it, then you're just not doing dragons correctly. But this dragon, is he's a hipster dragon. Instead of sitting on his horde beneath him, he keeps his horde above his head in the ceiling. Oh, yeah. All right, then. This thing is stuck in here. All right. Um, I also was talked into buying this. I got these dice from uh, the Crystal Cast guys. I, they look I, exactly like their sterling silver dice, which are like $250, but these were only 40 and they are nearly exactly the same. So, some kind of zinc alloy, if I remember correctly. They're That's very the shiny. They are very heavy. Um, they're also very cold to the touch. So I've got a full, like, RPG set. Oh, well, they roll decently. Dice here. Um, so those are very shiny. They came in this cool little leather bag. It's tiny and adorable. All right, then. They're definitely not weighted with remote controls that allow her to determine which numbers she rolls using her mind. That is not something that they have. They did, however, actually have uh, loaded dice that were either set to roll ones or sixes, depending did on they the have the. They, they had pre-designed loaded dice. Did they have any that were the classic kind that have the wax inside that you can melt with your breath to to change which way they're weighted? No, I didn't see any of those. And not enough cheaters at Gen Con, apparently. Apparently. You know, we try to keep it honest there. Try. Try. Operative word. Except for the tournament organizers of the, was it Marvel Super Street Capcom. Fighter 4 tournament? No, I, I participated in the Marvel vs. Capcom 3 singles tournament on Saturday night, and while I did get to round two because I got a buy... Um, in round two, I had to play one of the tournament organizers who promptly spammed Wolverine's up-down combo to decimate all three of my characters. Because once he started the combo, it was just, yeah, you're not going to get to move anymore. You will get to so, move so again using, when using your character the same dies. Attack six times and being the tournament organizer. Well, that's not quite cheating. This is probably the kind of guy who would own wax-loaded dice. Yeah, it... It makes me very happy to know that that strategy does not exist come November. That Wolverine will not actually be able to do that anymore. I'm, I'm just sitting here smelling this. I also got this really neat leather-bound um, notebook with this super awesome steampunk-looking lock mechanism on the front. And that one we got from Leather Castle. D something on your end is beeping, Pyro, loudly. I don't know if you're standing next to a microwave and your chicken's done or whatever, but... <laughs> I do not hear any beeping. Weird. Yeah, there is no beeping IRL over here. It must be introduced in the line. Okay, that's weird. Fair enough. Um, online paper. It doesn't go away. Tell me and I can call back. All right. Um, so the cool thing... Well, one of the cool things other than the obvious um, about this is that it's just a regular notebook stuck into um, the leather covering... And so whenever this runs out, I can just remove this and put something else there. Possibly another book. It's, that's the idea, yes. But this might make a neat sketchbook or something. You can never have too many of those. Mm -hmm. Then at least it'll look good on a shelf. Um, I also bought lots of bling. And by lots, I mean like two things, but still. I would have bought all kinds of bling. Um, I bought this... Uh, fake like old school skeleton style key on a brown ribbon and so that is a necklace thing that I bought they had similar keys on other ribbons but all of them were inferior especially the ribbon colors that is the that best is key good. that doesn't open anything ever um I also bought this locket here um little silver heart with like floral designs on the front and back and you open it up and there is a watch in there cool so a little battery operated thing apparently Very difficult neat. to set I have trouble pulling the stop up because I have no fingernails okay um, very tiny jewelers components need a magnifying glass to determine where they are I there's there's all kinds of stuff that I would have liked to see there but I was I was looking desperately for any sort of jewelry that had the mirror of Venus on it and there was nothing hey folks in chat there has, this has been a quest of Pixies since 
NAB show a long time ago, and maybe even slightly before that. And this is apparently not a product that exists. You probably know the mirror of Venus better as the female symbol that goes, that looks like a little person that goes with the male symbol that's a shield and spear. But it is, nobody makes them that is just the mirror of Venus that does not have the male symbol associated with it. And it is rather frustrating because I want one. And I would have paid ludicrous amounts of money at Gen Con to have one. On anything. All right, then. But, so there was that. Oh, I forgot Tepig. I bought this tiny, well, not very tiny, like, about yay big. S smaller than a bread basket, but, you know. Um, I, I bought this little plushie of uh, the Pokemon Tepig, which is the fire starter from the um, Pokemon black and white versions. And it was the best one at that con. It was the only one that was significantly on model enough for my taste. That was like your first purchase, wasn't it? Yes, it was. All right. $25, first day of the con. Similar to what Sen was complaining about earlier, where there was a lot of booths that were selling the identical steampunk items, there were also a lot of booths that were selling really, really off-model, plushy, angry birds and scattered all throughout the exhibition floor. This yeah, I, I noticed a lot of those, too. angry birds, plushies you'll ever find. But, I, I don't know. I still don't see the appeal of of angry birds in general, but... it's Well, have you played the game? I've played the game. I don't see the appeal of the, the characters in it. I don't think they're very entertaining. In fact, I, I don't think I'd want to have an angry bird sitting on my shelf looking at me. Well, yeah, the, the characters I, are not very good outside the game, but the game is sufficiently engaging that I guess people who have spent 40 hours playing it are willing to invest a little more and keep them around their house. I suppose. They're also appealing to children, from what I hear. My three-year-old stepsister is very into Angry Birds, and she can, I guess like... they are super squishable. They're, they're, they're just round, and so you could hug them. She can navigate my mother's smartphone to find the Angry Birds app and get to it, and then once she's in it, she can play it, but she can't, like, navigate the starting menu in order to get to the actual game. I see. Speaking of squishable plushies... Pixie should tell the story of how the universe grievously betrayed us by selling out of fox squishables. I'm sure you would be better at telling the story than me, because there was a fox squishable, and it was on sale at Gen Con for cheaper than you could get it off of the squishable website. And there were, in fact, eight of them, and, and we were there Sunday morning, and... We were we very nearly bought it in the morning, and the guy at the booth was like, I have eight of them. And we were like, we will be back soon. And then... Because and I, I wanted to... several hours, and, and, and all eight had gone, and then shortly after we walked away from the booth, disappointed that we could not get a $30 squishable, there was, there was ladies who walked by carrying three squishables. All of them foxes. So we just had a run on Fox Squishables during the five minutes after I left the booth? Yes. Because literally, um, Luca and I had been there. We we were there checking out the Squishables, and she was looking at them, and there's like, there's the fox, there's the octopus, and we ended up settling on the narwhal. Because why not? You get to say the word narwhal, which is something you don't usually say. When we returned, there was only, like, one narwhal left, and then there were, like, five octopuses, and that was it for the squishables. Apparently, the octopuses were not something the audience of the convention was a big fan of. Yeah, I, I guess not. Um, so, yeah, in the five minutes from me walking away from that booth, having purchased the narwhal, all of the foxes were gone. So, yeah, that, that was super disappointing. I totally want a squishable Cthulhu, though. I'm going to look those up. Pyro's going to call us back because his audio started to get really awful just there. Okay. I like uh. the company motto. Ah! WLRA? Okay, it's you. I'll put you in. 
Oh, the squishable dragon is cute. Yes, I know. The dragon was adorable, and I almost bought one, but they ran out of those, too. I didn't see any of these squishable Cthulhu's, yeah, or I probably would have bought one. With a squishable horde of treasure, because dragons should always come with hordes of treasure. <laughs> Those of you in chat can check out the squishable Cthulhu. And and be driven insane thereby. Aw, oh, so cutely insane. Man, I think I want one of those. <laughs> Why not? You have Cthulhu rat. Geometry. Uh, yeah, I just apparently have a miscellaneous collection of Cthulhu things around my room. So maybe that's my collection that I've been wondering about. You know, the apparently there's nothing I collect thing. I... I Guess I could collect Cthulhu's. I could set you up. There's a site that I know of that sells like crocheted Cthulhu things. All right. You could collect the hell out of some Cthulhu stuff. All right. Why not? <laughs> I'm just looking over all of these squishables, and some of them are ridiculous. Like these. Most of them are ridiculous. These that squishable is the point. baboon. Or the raccoon. They are all. Among other things, very squishable. Okay, so the squishable in general, the theory is that these are going to look a little bit off from the natural creatures just because of their shape. The squishable platypus literally just looks like a platypus. No, platypus are more um, streamlined than that. Platypi? I don't know. Platypuses? I think it's platypi. Only if only if the word platypus is of Latin origin. And the warble is horrible looking. That's kind of the point. All right. That's that's the point of it. Um, let's see. Did we buy any other crap? Well, I haven't gone over anything I purchased yet. So, I'll let I, you guys finish up. I don't we, know. we didn't even I think we've done ours, but I don't even know what you bought, and I was there with you. Right. I will listen atent intently. I concealed my purchase as well. <laughs> Not intentionally, though. Okay, so first off, um, the very first thing I did upon entering the con proper, the which is the exhibition hall, of course, um, was go over to the Privateer Press booth, because Privateer is just known for bringing exclusives to Gen Con to sell. Um, the big things that they had this year was uh, warm, uh, sorry, Horde's Domination is coming out in fall of this year, so we don't have a confirmed month yet, but one of the things they did for Gen Con is they brought all five of the brand new Warlocks with them. Mm. And if you happen to be working for Privateer Press that weekend uh, and went to the Press Ganger party, you got one for free. Cool. You're just like, hey, here's a bin of the new Warcasters. Grab one. Ooh. So I ended up picking up... Uh, I only have one Hordes faction. That's just all I play for Hordes. Uh, I'm going to post a link in the in the show chat log in just a second. So I ended up picking up uh, Master Ascetic Naresh, who is a Scorn Warcaster, who's kind of cool. I like his model a lot, if nothing else. Um, so... At, and uh, if you bought these Warcasters at the con, you actually got their stat card. Uh, has a gold ring around it to show that, hey, you got this as a special promotion. So even though in a month or two everyone will be able to get these models, no one else will be able to get the special stat cards. So that was the first thing I picked up because that was the exclusive. Um, big in addition to, to free Warcasters, the Privateer booth did us a solid at the convention by merit of being the only location that you could direct people to because yeah. they had a giant blue statue of robot murder. Yeah, it's called, it. it's called a Warjack Pyro. They had a uh, one for two... I, I don't play War Machine. Or they, they had a Warhammer, one for two scale model of a class, an ironclad Warjack that they had a special effects company build for them in Seattle so that they could bring that to shows with them. Mm -hmm. So anytime we were looking for a group, we just went, yeah, we're, we're by the Warjack. And that seemed to work so out. So head over to the Blue Jack. What is that? Signarin, I guess. Yeah, that, that's a Signarin Ironclad. Kind of the basic war jack of the game. Um, the other thing that I ended up picking up was the uh, Signar Stormstrider. Because I'd been saying for a long time that, yeah, I will get a battle engine. 
Um, let me pull up a picture of this. So this thing was an $85 model, but after I assembled it, I, I realized why it's that expensive because this thing is just enormous. Um, you got to actually see the model almost built. Uh, Pix, what did you think? It, it, it's, it's big. Like for miniature wargaming, this thing is like this tall. It, it sits on a base that is literally the size of a CD. Yeah. Like, people were saying before they got their war engine or battle engines that they were just going to proxy them using a compact disc. More like bigature than miniature. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I ended up assembling mine Maxature. by... Maxature. I, I built the leg structure and put the platform in place, but I didn't put the... Uh, what's, what's referred to as the disco ball or the... Uh, arc that sits over it or the two drivers in place yet. I'm going to paint those separately and then try assembling the whole thing. So, yeah. Um, you also pre-ordered a thing. I did, and we will post the link to their website in chat just now. I already pulled up their official page. Oh, you have the official page. Well, I do, because it's actually got some really cool art and preview pictures on it. Look at you. I just grabbed the first thing off of Bing. So... Soda Pop Miniatures, which is an offshoot of the Cool Mini or Not website, um, has actually put out their own game called Super Dungeon Explorer. Uh, this will be the first game that they're producing. The second one, which is supposedly coming out next year, is uh, called uh, like Relic Wars or something. Um, but Super Dungeon Explorer is something that's been in production for two years now. Um, Gen Con two years ago, they had like a couple preview minis, and last year they had more of them set up. So this is, it's actually a really uh, sought after game right now. It, a lot of people are waiting for the release. Essentially the idea is that you're playing a, a Japanese like side-scrolling arcade beat-em-up dungeon crawling game. Um, like the, it's a board game. Yeah, the art style is... Chibi. It, it's chibi, it's super deformed. It, it's, it's supposed to be like, a, it's essentially really cute D&D. &D. It's adorable. Like, I absolutely love the miniatures. They're so cute. I have a picture of Brad playing it with a close-up on the miniatures. I will drop it into chat and the show notes. Yeah, Brad, like, flipped out when he saw that there was a druid character who could transform into a bear. Bears um, are cool. But if you click on this little, like, action bar up at the top of the page, you can actually see the concept art for each of the characters. So, for instance, the Devilkin or Tiefling Rogue. It says Demonkin. Which is just cute. Gives you a little brief description of an idea of what her rules can do. Um, yeah, the, the idea of the game is that you just go through and run through the dungeon, collect loot, get better, and then fight a mini-boss to end the game. Uh, we played a demo that they were running demos all weekend. They had three boards set up and had employees running each of the boards. Um, it, it's super simple. It's very fun. Uh, it's got three different types of dice, blue, red, and green, and those determine what happens on the board. Um, it, it's just very fun. It, it's it's definitely a fluff game. It's not the kind of thing that you'll It's not very serious serious. business. Yeah, I don't think you'll ever have competitive Super Dungeon Explorer. But uh, if you're just looking for something to do with your friends, like just a game to throw down and play, this was a lot of fun. It's not as fluffy as the card game we borrowed from Pat, though, Pixie. <laughs> Which, you want to talk about it? Yeah. Do I want to talk about poo? We, we did hang out with Old, who was uh, attending the con as well, and he, he, in typical Old fashion, he picked up just a bunch of random games and was like, hey, play these with me. Yep. Yeah. One of them was titled Poo, which was a card game in which you are monkeys. Swinging poo around your pen. Poo at your enemies. And so you it, have, you have, most of the cards are, you know, to cast poo on to one of the opponents. Um, there are special poo cards um, that allow you to do more damage or distribute it among everybody or something. Um, there are event cards that, like, change up some of the gameplay. And there are clean cards which allow you to clean some poo off yourself because you are out um, once you accumulate 15 poo. 
I'm guessing you're going to want that model. It, it is not a very serious game, and the mechanics are not very complicated, but it's it is very hilarious simple. to play for the sole reason that we are all eight years old, <laughs> and talking about poo is hilarious. Yeah, it, it it's meant to be a joke game for fun. No one plays poo seriously. If he... I, I would like to meet the person who plays poo, like, seriously, competitively. The, the competitive poo player? Yeah. I, I would like to meet that person and then promptly punch them in the jaw. <laughs> nice. Um, so I guess I should finish up on Super Dungeon Explorer. Yeah. Um, the game was not actually released. There was some kind of processing error. They, they were expecting to have them for the, uh, Gen Con this year. But something happened in the production, and so they couldn't get them in time. Mm -hmm. But instead, they took the 20 copies that they did have, and they allowed anyone to come up and pre-order each day, which at the, at the end of Saturday, there were 159 pre-orders for this game. You asked. I, I just knew how many there were in the drawing. I see. Um, and so I, I'm imagining by the end of the show, there were probably about 200 pre-orders of this game. Each day, it, the, on the day that you pre-ordered, you would be entered for a drawing at, like, 4.30 in the afternoon, and if they drew your number, you they would just hand you one of the 20 copies that they got early. Which, we didn't win them, but, uh, oh well. Uh, they're going to be shipping me my copy in September. Uh, they said the game will be released about the second week of September. It'll be coming to most uh, well-stocked game stores. And for pre-ordering at the show, I got a t-shirt. Uh, actually, really cool design T-shirt with the the catchphrase for the game, which is called or, which is "Let's Party," and it's got all the little chibi characters on it. It's very cute. Mm -hmm. um, and I received an exclusive character for the game, uh, the Candy and Cola, who are kind of like the spokesman for uh, Soda Pop Miniatures, who designed the game. Uh, an extra character to play them in the game, and a model for them, which will be shipped to me when the game comes out. So yeah, uh, totally worth it. Uh, Definitely one of the things that I would like to have gone home with from the show, but, you know, I'll, I'll deal with it. Yeah, that's like uh, last year when I pre-ordered uh, Invasion from Outer Space, and it's like, but I want it now. Yeah, it'll be cool in the Wait middle of September when it's just like, hey, here's a game. Yep. And I will have tons of models to paint because the game comes with just, uh, not only does it come with your character miniatures. There's also minis for the kobold enemies. Yep, kobolds, uh... The Cobalt Leader, who's called Rex, who's just essentially a giant Cobalt. Um, it comes with a dragon. See, I'm imagining that you're saying Cobalt, like the color cobalt. blue. Nope. And uh, it also comes with, like, turtle enemies that I'm interested in, and zombies. There are a couple zombies in there. So I'm interested in seeing how these scenarios play out over. It's just you pick this many enemies, and this is what you play against. Now, I, I want to see the full rule set, but uh, I'm very much looking forward to getting this. The main focus of Gen Con by the convention organizers is actually less on the exhibition floor, where we spent most of our time, and more on the game floor. We didn't go much there, but there were a couple of things we wanted to get into the demos of, but they were just... There were people playing all of the games all of the time, and there was no way to get into them. It was pretty packed. One of the games we were trying to play was Hex Hex, which I think we already own. Pat we're already showing owns. it there. Yeah, Old well, already has that, but we didn't bring it with, and I had wanted to show it to Pyro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we kind of forgot that. Oops. Yeah. It's on my shelf. Um, so I guess other things I purchased uh, across from the Soda Pop Miniatures booth was Battle Foam who apparently have been having trouble selling their new half-size foam trays. This is a company that makes foam products for carrying uh, wargaming miniatures. Um, through their website, they were having trouble selling the half foams, mostly because the battle engines weren't out yet mm -hmm. for them to sell the foam for it. So they came to the show with like minimal amounts of it and sold out within the first hour. But because of the way they were shipping their stuff there, Privateer Press bought or brought their uh, their stock of the battle foam that they had sent them for previews. And so when Battle Foam found out that Privateer had these things sitting in their booth, they politely asked them, well, uh, 
can we take that so we can sell it? And Privateer was all too happy to let him have it, so I actually managed to get the foam for my Storm Strider on my second trip to the Battle Foam booth, even though they had told me that it was sold out the first time. So why did you go back? Because I went there for the Super Dungeon Explore demo, and I turned around and saw that, yeah, there's a Storm Strider tray sitting right there. Just in case they were lying when they told him the first time that they were out. No, I was over there for other reasons. Mistrustful. <laughs> Don't trust con goers. Or con salesmen. Yeah, on, <laughs> con. On, on that Get note, it. there was actually one thing that kind of ticked me off. You're still looking at squishables? People. Yes. They're adorable. Okay. I've, I've just got cute, cute, and more cute up on my desktop. Um, so, on the last day, I really wanted to pick up some new magic cards. And the first thing that came into my mind was uh, that I wanted to pick up one of the 2012 starters. Because, hey, that would give me a nice mix of cards. Uh, there's a starter specifically called Blood and Fire, which that title you're going to think, there's going to be some vampires in there, which is what I primarily play in Magic. It's a red-black deck, so it should have them. And I walked over the entire con, every booth that sold Magic the Gathering cards, which... It Lots must have, of them. It must have been at least 30 booths that I checked. There were a ton of booths, but most of them were just selling singles. And more of them were advertising buying cards than selling them, which was a little strange to me. Yeah, I, I can't imagine there was a ton of money to be made at the show if you were trying to sell cards. These would be people who are like, well, you're getting out of the game. We'll buy all your cards in bulk for like 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't hear of anyone making a ton of money at the show selling cards. Uh, what ticked you off about the vendors is going to have to wait because we just came up on a break. Okay, so we're going to be taking a break. And when we come back, more Gen Con. All right. Cliffhangers. In a minute, on Nerd Talk. And we're back. I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. That's Pyro. We hope. Pyro. I'm here. There we go. Mike was muted because I was chilling, listening to the sweet jams. It's on the Shrek soundtrack, that song. All I right, owned then. the Shrek soundtrack. Well, Sparkly Kiss requested some David Bowie, so there you go. <laughs> so yes, we do actually take requests. Whether we fill them or not is entirely up to us. Feel free to throw them at us. As long as they are not tangible. Because I don't feel like getting hit with a request. Ow! A request all over my face. I got 15 requests on me. Now I'm out of the game. All right, then. <laughs> okay, so I guess we can continue with Gen Con shenanigans. So, uh... Yeah, I, I guess we should go into the thing that really annoyed me at Gen Con. Which were what? Um, well, I spent most of Sunday trying to find that starter deck, which you'd figure gaming convention full of magic cards. Someone is bound to have brought a starter deck box with that pack in it, right? Right. But I only found 2012 starters at one booth, and that booth specifically would not open the extra case that they had. They they had one case out, and it was mostly empty. They had, like, four packs left in it, none of them being the one that I wanted. And the owner of the booth was actually like, yeah, I've got another case, but I'm not going to crack it open. I, I, Why would I, you even tell him that? I, I want to hand this gentleman money. I, I want to give him my cash in order to receive this item. I, it's funny that instead of, instead of saying, I don't have that, he would say, yes, I have it, but I refuse to sell it to you. Yes, I have it, but I don't want to open that case. Um, I think capitalism just broke. That guy doesn't get your money, then. Well, That's yeah, how that works. The supply and demand just broke. I, I was demanding something, and, and he refused to supply it. Well, this may be a simplistic model of capitalism. I demand things. Oh, here they are. Wee. 
I like, demand yeah. things, you provide Ridiculous. them, and I hand you the money for them. It, it doesn't feel it's, that complex. It's, it's, which is weird because in all of the booths I went to, when, as soon as, you know, the, 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 the vendors will be talking to other people who are, you know, looking or browsing or whatever. As soon as I walk up and go, I would like to hand you money for things, they're all like, oh, I'm paying attention to you now. <laughs> you Especially the one you lady want to offer me. Valley who yes. is like, thank you so much. Somebody is buying. OMG. Yeah, at, at a con, it's supposed to be, you're the one with the money. Great. What can we uh, sell you? Mm-hmm. Not, yeah, we've got that. But you can't have it. I forgot to mention that. I bought art. You did buy you art. You did buy an art. Um, There was one lady there, and gosh, I can't remember her name for the life of me now. Uh, Leslie, maybe something. I, gosh, I don't know. She did this really great drawing of um, Samus in a stormtrooper suit, which was great. So we're assuming that rather than being in other M, the real it, Samus had joined the Imperial uh, stormtrooper. It is Lorraine Schlechter. Yeah. I found her by googling it. <laughs> cool. And so I bought a great big like what was a ten inch print of that. This one that I'm going to drop in chat is in black and white, but yours is in color. Nice. And so I bought that. And there's kind of like some BS going on there because I guess Gen Con takes a cut out of the artist's um, profits. Or, and or, furthermore, you cannot purchase from the artist and then the artist relinquish their cut. You have to use Gen Con's cash registers. And then Gen Con arranged their cash registers in some kind of crazy way. You um, had to so, line up behind the booth where the cash registers were. And so what I had to do was she filled out a slip saying, this is what this person wants to buy, and this is what it costs. And, or rather, this is what I would like to charge them. And so you take that slip, and then you go and you stand in line. Thankfully, the line was rather short when I went. Um, so you stand in line and you wait. And some registers only take credit cards and some can take whatever, but I, I had cash, so it didn't matter. Um, and just so I went and I stood in line and then I took my slip and I went up to the lady at the cash register and she had to look stuff up and whatever and do her stuff in the computer to make sure that, um, what was her name, Lorraine? Something. The artist got credited for, um, for, for the purchase. And they also, it's, it's, it says on my receipt that it is a tax, but they, they um, I assume that that refers to their cut. Uh, actually, yeah. might still be in my wallet, that receipt. Yeah, the, the way that Gen Con works for artists is very different it's from the way they it are works the for mom retailers. Here we go, Gen Con purchase receipt. And just, yeah, Lorraine Schlater. Um... So I just like price twenty dollars. So subtotal is twenty. They have tax on here for one forty. So I paid twenty one forty to that cash register, and then I assume I just have to kind of hope that Lorraine gets her twenty bucks somehow. Yeah. The um, apparently you don't have to go through all that nonsense if you're buying something that costs five dollars or less. And so of course by Sunday all of those things were gone. Yeah, but the artists have to do their large purchases through the Gen Con staff. It's yes. really kind of hostile by the convention organizers towards having artists on the exhibition floor. It's, it's, it, it really bothers me because a, a lot of, and as you saw with Lorraine's reaction, the, the artists are used to people, are pretty accustomed to people just walking up, chatting about things, pointing at things, looking at them for a while, occasionally trying to take pictures, and then not buying anything. Mm hmm. And so, to put an Indeed, even higher barrier... She was used to having people walk up, want to buy something, learning that they'd have to go through all this hassle of dealing with Gen Con chicanery, and then deciding that it's too much work and yeah. leaving. So adding an even higher barrier to entry for the people who actually want to give the artist money is completely preposterous. I don't understand why they can't just go... can't just have her keep track somehow of all of the money that she made at the con and then take their percentage cut after the fact. Mm -hmm. The other thing the con did not do very well was organize the cosplayers. If, if they wanted to be a good at cosplay, they would have put them in a room. And there were rooms in the convention center that were not in use. And the rooms that were in use were jam-packed full. But they were telling people cosplayers to stay out of the hallways and the hallways are the only places there is to be. Mm -hmm. 
Speaking of cosplay, though, we had a cosplay. We had two cosplayers in our group. We had two cosplayers with us, but only one of them is on the air. So, yes, would you like to describe the troubles of cosplaying? Um, and, and, and what do you mean by that? Do you mean well, the, just the, I, the uh, hassle of doing it? So what do you have to go through if you wish to cosplay for a con? Um, well, first you have to pick your costume. Um, usually people want to go with something that's fairly recently, from, from a fairly recent media so that they get high recognition. Um, something you should do is pick a costume that, um, whose character vaguely represents how you already look, particularly in body type, because of course there are wigs and hair dyes and things like that. My hair is not naturally black. I you can like do it. a lot of interesting things with cardboard and leather and fabric, but you cannot change your facial structure. Yes. So pick good bones. I, I found that it's also important to pick something that will stand out that you are, in fact, actually cosplaying something specific. So, for instance, don't try to cosplay a character from uh, Game of Thrones because you will just look like you are wearing medieval garb. Like everyone else there. Yeah. Um, pick something that has, like, some distinct features. Mm-hmm. Even that is more adequate than picking a cosplay that is basically modern clothing, because then people will be too shy to ask to take pictures of you because they won't know you're in a costume. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you had some trouble with that this year. I, I don't know. I, I didn't think so, but I, I was cosplaying as Jade from the video game Beyond Good and Evil, which came, to, came out, gosh, I can never remember, it's either 2003 or 2004. I believe it was 2003. Uh, 2003. There we go. So it came out in 2003. Mm -hmm. um, critically acclaimed, not very popular in the mainstream. So I've, I've already picked something with very low recognition value to begin with. But the ones who do recognize it are freaking diehards. <laughs> yeah, those are the people who are, like, thrilled to see you there. Uh, especially the guy from Belgium. Yeah, that that guy from Be that guy from Belgium was uh, was like so excited, was like oh my gosh, she cosplays a character from a French game, dude. He was excited. I was excited to be recognized. Um, but yeah, I I ended up uh, to, to attempt to save money on wigs. Uh, I just dyed my hair and have been growing it out over the last month, which in and of itself got me weird reactions. <laughs> That guy. You remember Pyro? I he do. Was, he was asking about how I'd put together the costume, and I was all like, well, I spent several you months were... growing out my hair, and he's like, growing out? I that your hair could have been shorter. <laughs> I, I, I found that kind of funny. <laughs> um... But, but yeah, so there, there was that. There was collecting the pieces. Is you, you have to kind of look at all of the things that that character um, typically wears, um, any props that they are usually seen with, because props typically tend to make your costume. Yep. Um, if, if there's an item or something that they're usually, or an accessory that you, they're usually seen with, that usually ups your recognition factor intensely. And so for me, no, those Solid things... Snake did a pretty good job of this by having a large box to hide under. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and so I... I, I, um, I made sure that a couple of the key things that I got... Well, one, I had to dress in mostly green. And two... Um, th there's a certain style and aesthetic. You don't have to, like, go out of your way or to hand make things that are exactly the thing that that person wears. If you can g find something that matches that general aesthetic, something that that character would wear, or could be perceived as wearing. Um, for instance, I, the pants I wore, um, while proclaiming to be an olive green, really looked rather brownish, but it, it worked with the aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Um... I, I ended up getting a fabric marker and drawing the rest of the design on there because you weren't going to find that anywhere. And that seems I, to be, like, one of the requirements of cosplay, that you have to be willing to make your own stuff if they don't sell it. Yeah. Um, Luca specifically had to hand-paint the floral pattern on her dress because they don't make that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, well, if you, you buy your whole costume off of a shelf, then you're almost not even putting in the effort. Yeah, it's that's, that's part of the fun of it is building the costume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So absolutely that. Uh gosh, so a couple of the props that I wanted to make sure that I had um, dressing predominantly in green was one way to get recognized. 
Jade wears a green lipstick, and that particular shade of green was such a pain to find that I had to actually email Geek Sheet Cosmetics about making it. And it's not and part of a, their regular line. There was a fortuitous line. turn of events involved in this because they were like, yes, immediately, we will make it for you. And so it is part of the regular line now. They call it Toxic Unicorn. It tastes of green tea. It goes on like butter. It's great. I can't endorse that, like, thoroughly enough. Um, they're not even paying me. Yeah, we, we should have them sponsoring, really. I, yeah. They- I, love I was super disappointed because there was a booth called Geek Chic at the exhibition floor, but it was a different Geek Chic than the Geek Chic we are familiar with. Yeah, but we've talked about that instead Geek of cosmetics. Before. The company that makes uh, handcrafted gaming furniture. Yes. Yeah, we've we've discussed them before on the show. The, those they are, they do make nice things. But I was disappointed that it wasn't what I was expecting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do so, make nice things like giant multi-touch tables, which was related to another thing, but we'll get to that later. Yeah, so there, there's that. There's the lipstick that was, again, really difficult. Um, the signature hair and headband that I had to go out of my way for. I, she has a inventory thing that's some sort of purple sphere on her hip that I just used a belted canteen. It seemed to work out okay. Yeah, that seemed to work fine. So yeah, a lot of it was modifying things you couldn't find every day to suit the purposes of the costume. And if they can suit a practical purpose, that's even better. So, yeah, so now you own a nice canteen. Yep. Um, and, a, and a belt. And a belt, <laughs> Because yeah. I have been, we've been working out, and so I lost at least an inch off of my waist. And so I discovered, once we had gotten to the con, that my pants no longer fit. Bring a costume repair kit. Luca was fabulous in this regard, and she, like, came prepared for everything. Yeah, that little $2 (laughs) kit that she had was amazing. And so that was really great. That was a great idea. (laughs) Know where your thrift stores are. Um, I, I don't know. I just think it was really funny that on our way to the convention center, we had to stop by a Walmart. And you Kmart. Were, Kmart, yeah. And you were the one dressed in cosplay, and yet somehow Brad, the one who's dressed completely normally, is the one who got harassed by the locals. Because they thought he worked there. Because he was wearing his badge, and everyone thought that was a work ID. <laughs> Silly. Hilarious. And yet you were walking around with green lips. And I only got commented on that once. On the way there, in a small town, at a truck stop. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of not feeling the, like, just basic steampunk that everyone seems to be doing these days. Mm-hmm. Because, like, I don't know, steampunk, you should really, like, go all out if you're going to be doing it. Like, go one step beyond the normal, which is what I think I'm planning for a future con. Mm-hmm. But that outfit will be so ridiculously hard to craft, it will actually require real working parts. You can either turn the mic so that you can look at me while speaking, or speak into the mic. I- I'm currently looking through Kotaku's. Uh, they apparently that's, had it. A- that's not Kotaku. Oh, I really mean, It's the Gawker uh, sites. Uh, but Gawker had apparently... Uh, some coverage there of the cosplay from Gen Con. And they're, and, call, they're calling they're titling this feature as the best cosplays of Gen Con. No, the coolest. Not the best. Um, I'm specifically looking at the old man Link who was hilarious. I, I saw him a couple times. The details of the post is more the cosplays from Gen Con that we bothered to collect into this post. Or that the they, they photographer hit some of the happened to see. They missed some things too. Yeah, there was... There are some really great Star Wars costumes. There. I liked the zombie that they had at the D and D booth. I thought he was really cool. And and compliments to anyone who actually bothers to build the outfits from Halo because those are really hard to make. Mm-hmm. Um, Luca actually got featured here, so if anyone wants to see her outfit, it's posted there as well as through our uh, Flickr. You can see Pixie's costume in the comments as well as in the post for this podcast when it goes up. All right, then. Um, This Mass Effect group, like, 
Okay, so there were two good outfits. I shepherd. Liked, I liked their shepherd. Femme Shep. And I liked their. How sa- did I miss this? And I liked their Samara. I, I I liked those two. I thought those two were great. Um, their Miranda. Okay, outfit was almost right. But she does a good job of illustrating our point about picking a character that has similar facial bone structure to you. Yeah, the facial structure and the hair didn't make it. Um, uh, the, the Tali the is Tali's, a cobbled mess. Yeah. The Tali didn't quite make it. I like the Joker a lot. I think the Joker's f- cool. but the elus- By which we mean the Joker in the Mass Effect universe. Yeah, and... Uh, but the elusive man? No, I'm not feeling it at all. That is not. I didn't not, even recognize fact, him Sheen. based on that. That is not Michael Sheen. Martin Sheen. Thank yeah. you. You're right. It's not. <laughs> You're right. That's not Michael Sheen. That's not even Martin Sheen. That that there is not even there is not even a person named Michael Sheen anywhere in the world. I'm sure you could Google that away. <laughs> so yeah. Um. Overall, I like the cosplay. I think that was rather impressive. So, I, I was There was happy. a lot of good stuff there. I do think the con should have had a room for it. They had the tables. It's it's they didn't even have a proper masquerade really. It's they they kind of paraded some people in a circle down this one hallway. There was hallway. an impromptu conga line at one point. <laughs> now that, that was, was actually thing. planned. <laughs> but it 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 was very sloppily chopped together and therefore it had all the properties of an impromptu conga line that's mm-hmm. that's that's it was meant to be a jab yeah the con staff was monitoring it i like the i loved the uh the con staff at the end that was literally shouting this is the end and, and it took everyone a couple seconds to go oh end of the line that's not in fact a cosplaying uh doomsayer this is the end. I will kill you. This is the end of all things. This is the same confusion I had in Mass Effect 2 when the person was like, afterlife, now. I assumed that meant they were going to murder me, <laughs> but then it didn't, and I was very confused. You're going to the afterlife. Not if I send you first. I met the club. I that thought did not even occur to me for a second. I could piece together the thought process, and given a dumb enough shepherd, I think that would actually be a hilarious moment. <laughs> just, just kill the messenger. If you assume that shepherd is a moron, I, I is really want possible. renegade shepherd to now have the option of going. Not if I send you there first and pulling out his gun. <laughs> just have the batarian like completely facepalm. Just saying, I think playing an idiotic shepherd would be hysterical. Like a Rengrave? Yes. In play, space. Play a Rengrave shepherd. Ugh. You and that stupid drunk of a character. You keep bringing him up, so obviously he works on some level. <laughs> I like this Mass Effect idea. It's similar to the play style of L.A. Noir where you just deliberately harass all of the people you are interrogating. <laughs> That's right. Get everything wrong. 14-year-old <laughs> girl, you killed your mother. <laughs> the thing is it's the, it's the really worst, meanest, cruelest detective there is. <laughs> so rusty? Yeah. I I think uh I think Roy Earl gets that title. Okay. Anybody have anything else for Gen Con? Uh, let's see. Um, I I did have some more things at the privateer booth that I saw but didn't end up purchasing. Uh, I did like the fact that they appear to be giving Cador more love than it's gotten recently, uh, making up for the fact that it took them... Well, the last thing to come out for the Mark II release... The thing that no one had any confirmation of was the uh, the Man of War Demolition Core, which were supposedly held back because, well, they wanted to put them out in plastic and they didn't have anyone to sculpt them. So not only were those released at the show early, but they also went ahead and just put out the plastic box for the Man of War uh, 
I'm sorry, I said Demo Core earlier. The Bombardiers were the rumored ones, but they actually put out the box for the Bombardiers and the Demo Core on the Gen Con floor, uh, as well as the box for the two-player starter, which really, if you were Privateer, wouldn't it make more sense to put out the two-player starter on the first day and have that be, like, one of your big selling points for the con? Like, hey... We've got this thing called War Machine that somehow you haven't heard of yet. We've got this demo of the game that even comes with two whole armies and the rule book. That that seems like something you would have wanted on the floor the first day, not not uh partway through Saturday. Meh. Ah well. Um I don't know, I'm kind of excited in the fact that you and Pyro are now back into Magic the Gathering. They're, you're starting it. Yes, well, I, I, I might get into a couple of rounds of Friday Night Magic. I don't even know if there are any card shops left in Las Cruces. All the ones I went to back when I played have gone out of business. We've got a bunch of them up here. Uh, so there's tons of options if you want to play in this area. Um, but I do like your idea. He might want to play in this area and not be physically able to, just saying. I do really like your idea of of playing only in drafts. I think that's really cool. And if you if you do it, I only played in drafts, and I basically only played in Friday Night Magic. So it was dirt cheap. It was like $8 a week. Yeah, but our I, Friday I, Night I, Magic is kind of like crazy super competitive up here. So it, it is not a newbie-friendly environment. But one of the things that I actually found really entertaining is uh, I spent a lot of time hanging out in the electronic gaming room that they had set up across the hall from the main I actually uh, didn't go there hall. at all this year. I, I took a lot of time in there, and one of the things that I really loved was uh, I actually saw a game for the Kinect. Like, I'm not even doing the air quotes for game. So this was Konami's uh, Dance Masters, which, yeah, this is the company that also put out Dance Central, but this is kind of a different thing and actually seems to be more of a successor to Dance Dance Revolution than, uh, than Dance Central was. So basically the idea of this game is... You're more trying to hit points on the screen and do specific motions rather than have the game try to pick up specific dance moves on you. And I actually think this worked better. Um, they didn't do licensed music with it. Uh, all the music in it were, was uh, music that you would find in Dance Dance Revolution. And so as a result, a lot of the gamers in the room who had played DDR were like getting all nostalgic whenever someone was playing one of those old songs. <laughs> so things like uh, Dynamite Rave, uh, Night of Fire, uh, let's see what else was on there, Paranoia. Uh, all very cool, very signature DDR songs that I really loved hearing. You're just browsing the cool and crazy stuff from Gen Con? Yes. Post. It's, it's making me a little bit nostalgic for something I did last weekend. <laughs> oh, five minutes ago. That was good time. That was a good five minutes ago. <laughs> I, I find some of this incredible. That they were hilarious. advertising for the Smurfs in the children's area? I didn't go back there. I, I did walk through just because I wanted to see everything. One of the things that I did get to try, um, I got to play the new THQ Space Marine game. This was incredible. For both the Xbox and the PlayStation 3. I, yeah. I tried out both versions of the game. And my compliments, this may be a Dynasty Warriors style game, but if you are not paying attention to what you are doing and using your abilities, you will die. You will die hardcore, despite the fact that you are a space marine and they are just orcs. So, uh, yeah, we're definitely going to be doing a review of that one when it comes out in a couple months. Actually, I think, like, next month. I want a free t-shirt from them. Hey! Shirts. So, that was neat. Um, the game looks beautiful. It controls really well. Uh, you do feel like you're playing as a big, brutal space marine, taking on waves and waves of orcs. So that, that was a lot of fun. I don't know. I liked the mix that they had this year. Mm -hmm. um, 
the last two years that I've gone, I felt that the electronic gaming was a little overpowering, that they didn't have enough room for other stuff. And this year, there, there were a couple booths advertising electronic stuff, but nothing too bad. And the play area for just, like, playing your games, whether they were card games, board games, or miniature games, was huge. It was its own separate hall. Easily as big as the exhibition hall. There was... There was some electronic stuff on sale in the dealer's room that we thought was neat. Yeah, you guys said, for instance, you found a, a program that would allow for remote play of D&D. &D. Yeah, it was software meant to... Uh, Meant to make playing it entirely virtual. So, did you happen to get the company name for that? I think we took a card or a picture or something of their booth. Okay, I'll have to see that because I do want to look into doing some remote play for D and D. Because that sounds awesome. <laughs> Shoot, we might not even have to grab everybody if that's the case. Yep. Not having to drive. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I I was really impressed with. Oh, we appeared to we have, might have lost, lost pyro. pyro. Yeah, I was thinking we hadn't gotten comments in a while. Is that you? Okay. All right, so the wonders of the phone system, I guess. We dropped pyro. Dylan. Hello. Hey, you're back. The phone well, system is just crazy. Okay. Don't even know how long you were gone for. Welcome back. Like a minute. All right, then. Did you have any comments you specifically wanted to make on anything you heard? Nope. That's, that's all I got. Now, Dylan, did you Gen have a Con. chance to check out Dance Masters? I did not have a chance to check it out. How does it determine your body movements? So what is the technology? Is it a camera? Yeah, it's, it a it's the Kinect. But oh, okay. instead of reading your full body movement and using that to determine if you're doing the dance moves, it only reads the specific limb that it's looking for and watches for where it's being placed uh, on the relative screen. Cool. So I, I saw people doing a lot more creative moves than you get with uh, Dance Central, which I, I find a, I definitely found Dance Central to be kind of lacking. But, uh... Sorry, Pixie's looking at something crazy on her screen and Aeon Flux cosplay. That was apparently kicked out of Gen Con? I saw that in the comments on the io9 article. People were a flutter about it. Yep. Who knows? Does not seem any more indecent than any of the wide variety of other costumes. Apparently, people are freaking out about how beautiful the Terra was. I know it. <laughs> We're just reading the chat com or the comments on the io9 uh, post. Mostly because I'm trying to find I will drop into IRC. Oh, I guess that already was. Nope. No, it wasn't. Now it is. Ah, oh, the idea. Persephone and Hades, probably. That picture. That would make sense. All right, then. There is a bunch of... There are a couple of pictures that are in front of a curtain that almost makes me think they were having a cosplay show. Yeah, they actually but, did have a room set aside, but people didn't know to go to it to check out the cosplayers. It's they not like, should have advertised it a lot better because... Because yeah, we didn't find it. it it's not like how they do cosplay in Japan where, like, if you go to comic or something, there's an entire room set aside where photographers know to go to check out the cosplayers. Gen Con just doesn't do that. The only people who were going into that room was the staff and the cosplayers themselves. Yeah. Which seems like it's, you wasted the room if you don't advertise it. Yeah, you're Especially since there's, you know, you need to get more cosplayers in there, clearly. Your average fan wasn't going to find that room. Mm-hmm. So do we have anything more that we want to say about Gen Con? Nope. I do have a fair bit of news, though. What's that? Humble oh, Andy Bondo. Yeah, we'll probably... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's that. That is the news. That, that is one of the newses. The bundle, have... you can't get it anymore. It, it ended right as this show started, and it made over $2 million in two weeks. Nice. 2100000 and something. 
Awesome. Uh, hang on. I got this. I got these numbers. Two million one hundred thousand one hundred and sixty-seven thousand six hundred and thirty-eight dollars and twelve cents. That is more than the number that you had quoted me. So Maybe the number went up. Maybe. After it is possible that the number could go up because ah ah pyro pyro poor sound quality. Did you sound like a Decepticon? Maybe he is a Decepticon. Oh no! Okay, well that was worth it. Seriously though, you sound awful. Well, that is the whims of the phone system. But as it stands, it is about time for us to call it a night here on Nerd Talk. I would like to report on extra credits. Well, good thing your sound just came back. You will be able to. All right. Go ahead. Extra credits is not on the escapist anymore. They had a huge financial dispute. Um, the escapist wasn't paying them. The escapist tried to take money from the charity that they had set up to um, repair a damaged ligament in their artist's arm. And the escapist tried to get a 75% cut of those donations. In addition to not ever having paid them for doing the show. In addition show. to not ever having paid them. And now that they have broken up, they are not letting them post their episodes of elsewhere and maybe not letting them use the name or the style of the show to make a new show separate from the escapist because the escapist is saying that you know that 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 I, we have the rights to that ip and all of those old episodes you can't repost because they were done uh, while you were under work for hire despite the fact that you know hire you implies being paid yep i hope everyone else on the escapist really gets treated better than that i really do I imagine Yahtzee would have to, or we would have heard about it by now. Yeah, he's not one to keep a lid on things. <laughs> Indeed. But, like, some of the smaller names. But, I mean, Extra Credits has been making shows for probably getting close to half a year now. Yeah, and they didn't get paid for a single one. I don't know how that works. Like, I would be expecting pay after, like, the fourth show. Yeah. Well, to be fair, how long have we been doing Nerd Talk? Well, no one's going to pay us. We're, us. we're doing this so that Pixie gets college credit. We are also building up. We are also trying to be internet famous, just saying. Love me, internet! Internet, I'm okay with just a friendly handshake. I have a feeling we lost Pyro again. I'm still here. Oh, there he is. Technical difficulties. Okay, so next week we will be back with our normal review. Not quite sure what we're reviewing yet, but hey, check the Facebook. Uh, at facebook.com slash nerd talk. Or follow and Pixie via her Twitter. At nerd talk also Pixie. be sure to check those things sooner than the next show because we will have a comprehensive high definition video thing for you to watch. Of everyone but Pyro who was nope. not in nope. the studio. Nope. He's totally got video. I have my, oh, I have my cool. camcorder. He's got his setup too. I have better video than you do. Great. This is better We're than We're shooting I in HD. <laughs> All right then. Although I will let Pixie say her Twitter address again because I preempted her. All right. So, um you can follow me on Twitter at nerdtalkpixie. Uh and hey, if you like us on Facebook, we're going to do something for 200 likes. Not quite sure what yet. Although there's been suggestions, and you can keep suggesting them to us. Uh, shoot me an email, pixie at nerdtalkshow.com, or just make a post on our forums. Uh, you can just click the forum link on nerdtalkshow.com and be redirected to our very spacious and roomy forums. There's a lot of room in there. In fact, you could fit an elephant in there. A digital one. A digital elephant. <laughs> I'm not sure how many... Uh, it's that takes up but either way we will be back next week same time same place uh right here at wlra and at nerdtalkshow.com um if you're listening to the pre-recorded podcast on itunes you should totally catch us live tuesday nights at 6 p.m central uh with that i'm pixie i'm sen pyro i'm pyro sim and you've been listening to nerd talk <laughs>